uh, good evening again. Thanks for watching here. So uh, we're here, back here at the um, Panasonic brand showroom uh, because I actually got a few more things I need to cover with the uh, Panasonic Lumix uh, series cameras. So previously I've uh, covered a little bit on the Jigs 5S with all the uh, fantastic video shooting modes as well as the, uh, the de facto standard uh, system frequency change among three modes, uh, 60p, NTSC, uh, 50p, PAL, and Cinema 24.00. So, and uh, it's a good camera. Uh, I'll never get to use one, but uh, I know I, you know the micro core four thirds would still have a lot of potential. Except two things, you know, with the GX5S, uh, low low picture pixel count, just 10 million pixels, and then the absence of the uh, the IBIS, the in-body uh, uh, sensor stabilizing. That's a very cool and useful feature. You know, that's really necessary in video production, that kind of thing. So there has to be some reason Panasonic has uh, skipped that, but. Uh, Let's not argue with that. So, I have here in front of me two um, standard grade uh, Lumixes. So, that's G9. Uh, it's also called G9 Pro in uh, Japan, I think. And uh, this is ZS220 uh, or TZ220, I think. So, it's great. I think it's a one inch sensor camera. Feels great. But the problem, of course, is that. Uh, these two cameras are not uh, uh, compatible with uh, world cam uh, system frequency change. So, so this is a problem with uh, Panasonic. You know, the, the the one big problem with Panasonic is that the company doesn't implement the uh, system frequency change on these models, but uh, instead limited that function to uh, just few few a handful of cameras, starting from the GH4 and then GH5, GH5S, and then the uh, one inch all round uh, zoom compact, uh, the FZ2500, which is not available in Hong Kong anymore. And I do like the camera, you know, well cam with uh, it also comes with the 24.00 uh, uh, cinema mode from such a, a mega zoom camera, you know, you can do video work with that. So, so, but uh, there's uh, actually more that I want to show you, some kind of confusion. So, uh, okay, so I'm not going to show you the, uh, the manual in detail, the setup manual, there's no system frequency change. And uh, now we're here, oops, okay, now we're here with the uh, AV60 mode, and I'm going to show you what uh, on a, like a PAL camera, what uh, video sensor you're going to have. You get four seconds 50p, 50.00p, and then uh, interlace. And then, like I said before, you know the uh, the settings here, the uh, you know the uh, the, uh, the the sampling, the uh, the the uh, chroma sampling, and the quantization settings are, are listed as well as the uh, audio codec. So it's Dolby Dolby Audio. Uh, okay, is there an LPC? No. So with AVCHD, the audio codec would be Dolby. So. So now let's uh, switch to a uh, MP4. So no fancy XAVCS with Panasonic. Yeah, it's only Sony thing. But here's the catch here. So uh, okay, let me switch off the uh, eye sensor. So let me uh, try to focus this a little bit clearer. Now it's a power camera, but it does have a 60p. It's an NTSC compliant 60p, so it's a 59.94. P. Uh, image sensor output 60p or 5994. Uh, uh, it's a 4420 um, chroma sampling. 8 bit quantization. Long uh, GOP. Oh, you know what? Linear PCM recording. That's a great, great setting, right? You need to live with the, the AAC compression with the audio. So it's great. And then you get 50p. 30p. It's actually a 29.997 nine, nine, NTSC compliant. 25, 24. 24 again is NTSC compliant. It's not the uh, Cinema 24.00. So it's a 23.98. And then what do you get? Oh, the also uh, the 4K recording modes are here. This high def, and you can see the reader setting set spans two pages. So we're gonna get in. So. Here, here, so, 
No, I don't see any uh, 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 standard high def. It's only full high def. No, no 720 settings like with the older cameras. So okay. So I'm going to repeat uh, the settings. Let's see if I can do that. Okay. All right. So okay, you know what? Let me. Uh, I'll do it with my left hand. I'm gonna do it with my left hand there. Okay. Okay, let's do it right here. I don't want to, uh, to, to press the lens barrel here. So, uh, okay, I just turn off the uh, eye sensor. So, we hit actual ABC again. Uh, recording quality. So, again, yeah, it's uh, all the, um, the PAL, the PAL modes. With the exception of the 24P, which I believe is a uh, NTSC compliant 24P, I don't know why Panasonic could have it set up in a PAL camera. So this is a weird thing. So the same thing goes to the G9. And uh, let's uh, now let's switch AVs. No, and before. Okay. See that's a problem with uh, uh, a non-articulated screen because uh, you get problems with these settings, but. Let's see. Okay. So hopefully that would uh, that will be a better representation. 30p, uh, 4k, 25, 24. These are all NTSC compliant uh, bit rates. And then 60 is uh, 5994. It doesn't show up in the uh, consumer base camera. Here. 50, 30, 25. There's no 24. There's no 24 with the uh, full high def. Now there's a 720 mode here. So 720p mode is actually quite um, uh, useful if you don't need full high def. You know, also maybe it would uh, save a little ca uh, memory card space. Like in this case, I'm actually shooting in 720 only. And let's uh, see. So that's the confusion with the uh, uh, Panasonic uh, video settings. So, so basically. Uh, you know, with, with either system fix, with, uh, you know, whether it's pair or NTSD, as long as you're in MP4 mode, basically all the possible uh, video recording settings in both PAL and NTSD would show up. Uh, but the problem is that, uh, especially here at the, with the, the tech press here, they're not aware of that. You know, when they uh, state the specifications in their reports, they never say anything like this. You know, they, I, I don't think they even know that on um, on uh, the, 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 the high grade series like a GX4, GX5, you know, the, uh, they, they, they're probably not aware of the importance of the, um, uh, the uh, system frequency change. So, of course, they, they have read the press releases and it could be part of the uh, highlights the press release but they just don't know okay there's a shortcut menu I'm going to see if I could uh, do a little more something to show okay see uh, the problem with Panasonic menu uh, 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 um, you know GUI is uh, it's a little bit cluttered but okay let me uh, ah all right see now we have a better representation of uh, the. Oops. Okay. Put it again. Put it again. Don't worry. See. So every possible uh, video settings here in a mixture of PAL and NTSC are being displayed, but only if you use the MP4 mode. And if you switch back to AVCHC, then you're going to end up back uh, with uh, just PAL only. Unless you do a, a system uh, system hack to hack into the uh, the, the um, uh, service mode, then you you could uh, access the temporarily the uh, NTSC uh, bit rates. But uh, I recommend against that. It's not easy. But uh, now, so I want to so, <coughs> excuse me. So I want to really want to appeal to uh, Panasonic Corporation. Uh, you know, hope uh, to uh, to petition. You know to. Uh, try to uh, standardize the system frequency setting 
So, so the system frequency setting used to be here for the GX4, GX5, GX5S, and FZ 2500, but it's no not here. So, I would recommend, uh, highly recommend, um, you know, the uh, the Pavanes NTSC do boot, but only these two without the 24.00 cinema because uh, you probably don't need cinema 24.00 on these cameras and the G9 but it will be necessary and highly recommended to include uh, NTSC 50.00 and excuse me PAL that's PAL and NTSC uh, at uh, 5994 roughly 2060 so so yep I come in really need to uh, to put the efforts to uh, to make the, the master clock more robust to these kind of changes, you know. So, so I would be really happy to see any future models of the uh, maybe the next model of the ZS220 or the uh, G9 or G10, whatever that come with the uh, necessary pair uh, NTSC or system frequency switch without the 24. I mean, with the 24, it's great, but uh, I would say not necessary, one step at a time. So, by doing that, they will be leveling with uh, Sony. And uh, like I said before, Sony has its own problems with the uh, system frequency change with uh, consumer, uh, consumer hardware for the next screen. And that would be enough to drive people away from getting Sony's and back to the uh, Panasonic. But, of course, Panasonic needs to do what I said, really consider uh, uh, this a suggestion, also given that they could actually implement both PAL and NTSC frame rates under the MP4 mode, which means it should be a problem with AVCHD as long as uh, uh, they, they, they improve the master clock settings, you know, uh, you know so that uh, the, the switchover would be easier, more robust with any problems. I highly, I highly recommend PAL do that. But uh, see, G9 is such a great camera, but with this uh, uh, little or extra big hindrance, it's such a good, great camera, you know. If you want one of these, you might not want to, to, to turn to the GX5 or whatever, but uh, what a shame. So, so that's, uh, so, let's yeah, see what's the power button here, okay. So that's pretty much it, two very nice cameras but uh, crippled with the uh, video system free setting so there's still hope there's still hope that Panasonic would uh, set things strict but uh, only time will tell so again if uh, you guys are interested you guys in Hong Kong are interested in uh, playing around with the Panasonic come to the Panasonic uh, uh, brand showroom here at the 13th floor of uh, Seoul department store and uh, just uh, ask for cameras so that would conclude uh, my uh, visit and walkthrough at the uh, Panasonic place so I will be back with uh, more uh, video walkthroughs on the various uh, subjects with uh, camera hardware as well as automobiles so thanks again have a great evening and stay tuned